uh, being in the Fed, you must understand risk management and that there's a big risk that you may yeah. come on shortly after the president tweets about Federal Reserve policy. Yes. As um, uh, David just said, uh, 22 days in August, 19 tweets by the president. Uh, tell me how you look at this differential between German yields and U.S. yields. Is it a competition? No, I don't think it's a competition, number one. Two, it's a different economy. I mean, the U.S., obviously, exports and imports are important to us, but Germany even much more so. So I don't think they're uh, apples-to-apples comparisons. Do, do we need to set our interest rates relative to European or Japanese or anybody else's rates? No. I, we need to do what's appropriate for the U.S. economy, taking into account that there are effects, global effects, on the U.S. economy. But ultimately, the decision is what's best for the U.S. economy. Is there a um, case to be made that by reducing their interest rates, they reduce their currency and they get an advantage in trade? That, in theory, is true. But if you look at the last cut we took, a 25 basis point cut, the dollar moved in a different direction, right? So uh, right now, the U.S. Treasuries are, and the dollar are safe assets. And the world is looking in a, in a world of volatility. They're looking for safe assets. So when you take and you start to set where to put where to put interest rates, you don't say to yourself, well, I can't go higher and I probably should go lower because of the differential between the U.S. and Europe. So you can't ignore what's happening in the rest right. of the world. You don't want to be so far out of sync with the other major economies that it would cause problems. I don't think we're out of sync in a major way right now. But a hundred and. I mean, it's, it's 200 basis points at yeah. a sink. But you look at where we are with respect to our inflation plus our neutral rate. I think we're pretty much where we need to be. Let's talk about where we are in terms of the economy. How, how is it? What is your outlook for the economy? What is your view of growth right now? Is it too slow? No, I think it's exactly what we had anticipated a year ago, even two years ago. We're going back to trend growth, roughly 2% growth. And so where would you say policy is relative to that? Uh, trend growth. So in December, I was not supportive of the increase. Uh, I was supportive of the decrease somewhat reluctantly this time around to get us back to where I think policy should be. We're roughly where neutral is. It's hard to know exactly where neutral is, but I think we're roughly where neutral is right now. And I think we should stay here for a while and see how things play out. So you don't see a case for further stimulus to the economy? No, not right now. Why not? Because you look at the labor markets are strong. Inflation is moving up slowly, but with the last CPI print, it was a good print. We'll see how PCE comes in. There are negative headwinds, right, to the economy. But right now, I don't think they call for any drastic action. I think we can take some time and see how things play out. Tell me about those headwinds. Which ones do you think are the major oh, ones we're facing? I think trade. What we hear repeatedly uh, from companies is the trade uncertainty. It is not the cost of capital. When you talk to business leaders, they are not saying, I'm not investing in plant and equipment because the cost of capital is too high. That has never factored into any conversation I've had. It's about the policy uncertainty. C could you give me one specific example of a conversation you've had sure. where, where an executive has said, I am holding back on investment because of the trade uncertainty? Yeah, so one, one of our contacts was looking at the China situation, saying I may need to move my supply chain to other countries. One of those countries at the time he was considering was Mexico. <laughs> and then, of course, because Mexico's a NAFTA country, what could go wrong? Right. Well, then uh, we're talking about putting tariffs on in Mexico. And so you think about that individual and their board. How can they make a decision in this environment? Let's talk about um, the yield curve itself, which has been flat, yeah. negative for a bit. What kind of signal do you get from the yield curve? So I think it is a signal, an important signal, but it's one of many. Again, you have to look at the, the labor markets, very strong. You have to look at growth. Although we think that two plus percent growth is weak, it's not. It's exactly what we expected. When you look at the risks, uh, global economies are weak, and yeah. some are even in recession. Certainly, some have printed negative growth. How much of a risk is that to the U.S.? Well, I think it is a risk. But again, a lot of that depends on the country, right? It, it, they're very specific to each country. But again, this policy uncertainty is not only a U.S. phenomenon, it's a global phenomenon right now. You can't do anything about the trade uncertainty that's out there. Correct. You have to deal with that hand yep. that's dealt to you uh, in terms of the effects on the economy. Given that it has been persistent, given that the trend of it has been to worsen over time, isn't there an argument to take an insurance cutout for, for the kind of potential negative effects? I've heard that argument, um, but I'm not very sympathetic to the argument. Because right now, given the volatility even of the policy itself, 
Uh, I think we don't need to make that move right now. Nothing is moving dramatically in a negative direction. There's potential for it to do so. And I think we need to keep our powder dry so that when that happens, we have the policy space to move. When you say that, so you, you're not seeing it show up in the economic data, the, the effects of trade? Oh, yeah. I mean, on business investment, for sure. Right. But the consumer is the hero of the American economy. They keep spending. So it, it really does very. You have to look at where that effect is happening. Now, if the tariffs kick in and really hit the consumer, then I'm more worried. Um, you guys, Philadelphia Fed is known for great research, obviously, but also the Philly Fed Index. Right. Uh, it's a key manufacturing index followed by the market. Right. Uh, it's strengthened recently. What, tell us about the b business activity in your district. So the Philly district, the third district, never has the highs of the economy or the lows of the economy. We're sort of right in the middle. That's why it's a good predictor of the economy overall. Uh -huh. And so the Manufacturing Business Outlook Survey has been bouncing around a little bit. It's been volatile, but all the while it's been positive. So while there are these uncertainties, manufacturers in the district still say that business is pretty good. If we have these headwinds and the economy's still running at 2 percent. Do you think there's a potential upside to economic growth if the trade uncertainty were to go away? Oh, I think so. I, I think if policy uncertainty more generally, not just around trade, but a host of issues, were able to be resolved, we could see a significant increase uh, in growth for a period of time. We've started to see hints of it with the productivity number, right? right. And so I think that is, that is hinting towards higher growth, because unless we move one of two needles, that is productivity and the labor force, we're not going to get that higher trend. How growth. much more upside do you think there is to the economy? Not a lot. I mean, I think we mm -hmm. could get slightly higher productivity. We could run for a while a little under three, but that's not our forecast right now, just given the current situation. P people probably don't know this, but one of the things you've been doing at the Philly Fed is oriented towards this issue of workforce development. Yes. With this big issue out there, this major macro issue, people can't find workers. Right. How much does the shortage of labor limit the potential growth of the economy? Oh, I think in two ways. One, uh, we, on the plus side, firms are now being much more creative a, about investing in capital, capital deepening, because they can't find the workers. And that will have a, a positive effect on productivity. But on the flip side, I've, I've talked to a major home builder. He said, no, I can't even find, not people to carry bricks and sticks. Forget plumbers and electricians. I can't find people, laborers on the, the site to build the homes. That is limiting growth for sure. Wow. Um, is there, has there been any progress in this regard? We have brought down some of the unemployment rates in certain sectors, yes. certain uh, cohorts of the, of, of the labor force. Yeah, I think we've been surprised by how many people are coming back into the workforce. And that is a very good thing for them and for the country. How much more there is of that? I'm not sure. Um, one thing people talk a lot about is the possibility that the U.S. rates could go to zero. Do you see that on the horizon? Is there a possibility of negative interest rates in the United States? I'd never, ever say never, right, because that <laughs> comes back to bite you. Um, so I don't think that right now I, it's a high hurdle for me to think about having negative rates. There are a lot of implications in the U.S. economy if we did that, but I'd never say never. What about the uh, banking channel and the idea that a reason for the Fed to act, and, 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 and that could be in a variety of ways, is to actually target the yield curve. Have you thought about this idea of restoring positive slope to the yield curve, either by working on the long end or working on the short end, to increase the profitability to banks to lend? So that is one of the conversations we're having among many with the Fed Listens uh, effort that Vice Chair Clarida is leading, right, in terms of looking at our monetary policy uh, <clears throat> framework. Uh, no decisions have been made about this. It's a complicated issue because given that the U.S. Treasuries are the safe harbor around the world, just because we would take action doesn't mean the world's going to go along You with can't us. build a hill right? <laughs> because the world's going to keep knocking it down, essentially. Yeah. So uh, any efforts that you make to restore positive slope to the curve, they get flattened by the, the uh, room to the run to uh, safe assets yes, in the United States. Absolutely. Um, how much concern do you have uh, if rates remain too low for too long for the financial stability side of yeah, things. Yeah, that is the other factor that uh, I have to weigh. I didn't, didn't think the cut was uh, appropriate necessarily, but I went along with it to get back to neutral. But I'm on hold right now. My forecast is just to hold where we are for exact one of the reasons is that. That I think we, we run the risk of creating too much leverage in the economy. Do you worry, though, I just looked at the Fed Funds futures. They're priced for... Two more cuts this this year, at least. 
and about a 40% probability of a third cut. Now, it's come down a right. little bit, but do right. you worry about where the market's priced? A little bit, but again, that doesn't, uh, fa- it doesn't really factor into my decision making. I have to look at the real economy and look at what's really going on in the economy to come up with my policy stance. Is there a communications problem if the market gets so out of sync with where the Fed is? Oh, yeah, absolutely, right? It's macro 101. The market does the work. We don't, right? Right. And so the market needs to move. And I do think there is a communications challenge we face in explaining where our stance of policy is. Uh, Patrick, we began the discussion talking about the tweet from the president. How do you feel about these constant tweets, being, uh, the Federal Reserve being called clueless? Yeah. So my wife thinks I'm clueless in almost everything except monetary policy. Uh, so she'll give me that one. No, we're not clueless. I think the Fed has been the stalwart of the U.S. economy now for a long time, particularly through this period of the Great Recession and its aftermath. So I'm told the yield curve, the 210, just inverted again in my ear here. Uh, is that a signal that worries you? Again, it's one signal right. uh, of several that I take into account, but it's just one. 